Welcome to Gruesome Stories with the real Gruesome Tucson. Here's your hosts, Mark and John. All right, well, now that we got that over with, mm-hmm. welcome to the brand new segment called Gruesome Stories with the real Gruesome Tucson. Mm-hmm. Please like and subscribe and make sure you ring that notification bell so you guys can be updated whenever we come out with a new video. Mm-hmm. We're going to be coming out with new stuff, hopefully every week, if not every other week. We're going to really try hard to bring you guys the most gruesome, crazy stories around Southern California. Let's get into it. So today's video is sponsored by Everywhere Beer Co. in Orange. Dude, this video is not sponsored. What are you talking about? I thought you said you talked to the guys. I didn't talk to them. (laughs) Oh man. Thankfully it's worth it. Great beer. Highly recommend it. Everywhere Beer Co. Place where you should go. This jingle is in no way associated with Everywhere Beer Co. and was only made for this video. We're going to give you a review on these beers, guys, on this episode, mm-hmm. but stay tuned. We got a crazy story for you. Johnny, I'm ready. What's the story you have for me that's uh, pure evil? The year is 1990. Okay, that's a great year. I mean, I I was born in that year. Mm -hmm. 19 year old Victoria is going out with her friends to look at Christmas lights. After she's heading back to her apartment on Brookhurst. Okay. She pulls in, the gate is wide open and it's like really dark. Next you're gonna tell me there's some flickering lights and this sounds like a real horror story. Actually, yeah, there were flickering lights. Bruh. She pulls in, gets out of her car. She has her dog in the back. It's a cold night, so she puts her dog in her jacket. It's like a little Pomeranian. Okay, a little pom pom. Yeah, yeah, a little cute little guy, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's walking to her apartment like any other night. Mm -hmm. Okay, a man approaches her and says, "Excuse me, excuse me, I'm lost. Can you help me find where the beach is? We'll call him number one." He was number one. Just then, another man approaches. Another man, number two. You guessed it, number two. Now we're not talking about number two, like Dr. Evil's number two. We might be, he's one of the henchmen. You can keep me on the ropes, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, all right. He approaches her. He has a cigarette in his hand and he flicks it. Victoria watches the cigarette land and right then they both attack her. So number two puts a gun to her head and says he's gonna mutilate her, he's gonna throw her down the cliffs. Oh God. And that she's gonna die tonight. But wait, but what of the dog, Johnny? I'm glad you asked. He didn't see the dog, and the dog actually went and bit his wrist really hard. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was pretty shocked, because he didn't know the dog was there. Right. It creates a little bit of space. Victoria takes her dog, throws it into the bushes. It's a little small Pomeranian, she's able to do so. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, she wants to keep it safe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw him in the shrubbery, yeah, get it away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the men continue to attack her. Mm. While they're attacking her, they gouge her eyes, like, really hard. They have her on the ground, and number two puts the gun in her mouth. He moves her head and says, do you see that? She looks up, she sees number one, pointing a gun at the neighbor's windows. He says, the first one that hears you is gonna get their head blown off and you're gonna watch. It's your choice. So Johnny, if they shoot somebody, you wanna wake up the whole freaking complex? Yeah, it would, but uh, they have silencers. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Like Anton Chigurh. Yes. And then he hits her. Victoria comes to and she's being thrown into the back of a car. They start driving and ask, where are the nearest cliffs? This Victoria, she's a smart cookie and she plays dumb. Mm. She's like, there are no cliffs around here. I don't know where any cliffs are. So they're asking her this and she's the victim? Yeah. Yeah. Why would she want to tell them? Exactly. Well, these don't sound like very smart criminals, do Mm -hmm. they? No, they don't. Mm. Anyway. So they just pull over into a random neighborhood. Random, you say? Yeah, in front of a random house. They have her at gunpoint and they tell her to take her clothes off 
and they sexually assault her. I'm not going to go into the graphic details. but We don't need to do that here. If you want more details, then watch the 48 hours. My name is Victoria. So anyway, she remembers that she has a picture of her friend's baby in her wallet. She pulls it out and says, you guys need to let me go. This is my son. I need to go take care of him. They're thinking, why would we let you go? You've seen our faces. Again, Victoria, she's smart. She says, you gouged my eyeballs. I can't see shit right now. He's absolutely right. They continue to do unspeakable things to her. So finally, number two, pulls her out of the car, throws her on her hands and knees, says, keep your head down. He has his gun to her head and he's about to pull the trigger. The number one throws his jacket on her. And number two's like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. And he's like, dude, she's cold. Number two starts counting. Three, two, by the way, bitch, Merry fucking Christmas, run. She was running for her life, mm -hmm. and she was taken in by a nice family who immediately called 911. And this was in Huntington. This was in Huntington Beach. Before she's taken to the hospital, she's like, I have to go back to my apartment to find my dog. Right. They're like, okay, we'll take you back to your apartment. We'll look for evidence. Mm -hmm. Goes back to her apartment. By some miracle, you know, she finds her dog. Oh, great. Thank God, right? <sighs> they take her to the hospital. She's got, uh, she's got pretty bad injuries. She said that on a scale of one to 10, how was her pain? And she said a thousand. Ooh. The men even went as far as carving SOS into her skin. Shortly after, Detective Don Howell is put on the case. She leaves the hospital and then she goes into hiding at her grandma's house in Huntington. It's too much for her mom. Now this is obviously before Rip became uh, an entity in Huntington. Well before, well before, yeah. It's one of our favorite breweries. If you watch other episodes, great spot. Yeah. So before we go any further in the story, I'd like to describe a little bit about the beers we're tasting here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The beers we are drinking are from Everywhere Beer Co. and they are in Orange County. They just opened up probably around a month ago. Brand new to Orange County, right down the street from Angel Stadium. Great stuff. Um, their head brewer, Jeremy Grinke, uh, was the head brewer of the brewery, and he started this one up with his other colleagues from there. I mean, they're coming out of the gates with some of the best beers that I've ever had. Some of the best sour beers and the best uh, overall beers you're gonna get on the market. They uh, <clears throat> have new beer releases every week. Um, Johnny, what are you drinking there? I got the uh, Italian Pilsner. Okay, yeah, the delicious moments. That's, yeah. that's it. This is actually uh, one of my favorite Italian pilgrims I've ever had. That's a bold statement there, Marky Mark. That's a bold statement. It is a bold statement, but it's a true statement. Their beer is on point. Everything that I've had from them has hit the mark for me. This Italian pilgrim, for example, perfect, dry, flavorful, just a tasty overall, like crispy, delicious Italian Pilsner. What'd you get? What are you going? You know, I went with their New Zealand Pale and uh, it's superb, I'll be honest. Um, being in New Zealand, you know, I'm sure there's some, maybe some Nelson, maybe some Nectar on in there, uh, hops. It's oh, very Nelson? dank. Yeah, one of my favorite hops of all time. Um, it's got a very, very nice overall kind of a smooth, slight bit of fruitiness and uh, uh, end of the tongue dryness to it. Very tasty, very good. Everything that I've hi had there is in high regards. Uh, hats off to these guys. Um, I don't even need to say any more. They're great. Go mm -hmm. check them out. Uh, back to the story. So Detective Howell, right? Howell, yeah, Detective, Detective Howell. Yep. Detective mm -hmm. Howell. Mm -hmm. He decides to go on the lead of the SOS. Mm. The Son of Sam? No. Sing or Swim? No. Samson and Sons? The Sons of Samoa. Oh. They put a couple of detectives on that lead for, for a year. Nothing comes up. So they're just like, okay, forget this. Days turn into weeks. Weeks turn into months. Months turn into years. Jeez. Victoria moves on with her life. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She actually moves out of state. She uh, she meets a man. They get married. They have a couple of babies, right? American dream. Bro. Victoria gets a call. 18 years later. Right. Who do you think's on the other line? Detective Don Howe. You know it. They got a hit. A hit. A hit. He sends her a lineup of six suspects. Six. She immediately points to number five. That's our guy. Before I give it away, who do you think it is, Mark? Frau Farbissena. And in the guys! Patty O'Brien. They're always after me, lucky charms. A lot of vagina. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just not getting it. It sounded like you said your name was a lot of... Uh... Random task. My henchman, Mustafa. Number two. I like to live dangerously. After what I've heard, I gotta say, I'm stumped. The man in the photo was Joseph's son. He was an MMA fighter, but was most known for his role as Random Task in Austin Powers. Oh, no way. The silent but deadly type? That's the guy. Oh, the guy who, uh, no. you know, was a parody on Odd Job from, from 007. Exactly. Bro. Victoria realizes that she owns this movie. Why wouldn't she? Who didn't own Austin Powers back in the 90s? Uh, Did she own the VHS? I don't know. Was it VHS or DVD? What did she bro, own? Bro, I don't know, bro. Okay, well, proceed. What happened when she found out? Well, she immediately destroyed it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, he was in the database for kicking his ex-roommate's car door in and uh, as part of a plea deal he had to submit his uh, DNA. So the case was immediately handed over to Detective Eric Scarborough of the Sexual Assault Unit and he was determined to find out who Who? 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 What are you f***ing now? The other suspect was. So what does he do next? He puts out a picture of Joseph's son and a sketch of the other suspect out into the media. Mm. Shortly after, they receive an email from a man who wanted to remain anonymous. Right. Okay? Okay. He says, I don't know anything about this case, but I do know Joseph's son because I went to high school with him, and the man in the sketch looks a lot like one of his buddies from high school. Wow. His name is Santiago Gaitan. So detectives set up surveillance outside of Santiago's apartment complex in Huntington. They witness him finishing a bottle of Sunkist and throwing it in the garbage bin. Not Sunny D? Not Sunny D. Do you leave any uh, fluid left behind? Not a drip. So they go and fish it out of the garbage. Right. They're dumpster diving, they right? They gotta go in there. Yeah. The DNA is a match. So they arrest Santiago. And Victoria can finally put her greatest fears to rest. Well, Mark, I'm afraid it's not that simple. The statute of limitations for rape and kidnapping had run out. You freaking kidding me, bro. Hold on, bro. Have a little more faith in Detective Scarborough. Okay. You know, he's a crafty one himself. Right. And he charges them for torture instead. Mm, okay. Now, now, Santiago was pretty quick to strike a plea deal and confess. They gave him 17 years. Random task, on the other hand, he's like, nah, we going to trial. All it took right. was Victoria to make her testimony. And the jury was sold. Random task, AKA Joseph whatever, was found guilty of torture. Dude, that's amazing. So end of story? Not exactly. How this guy was able to be in a grand picture, like my favorite movie? Well, oh, top five. Top five? Maybe, maybe top five comedy. Maybe, maybe top 10. It's beyond me. Yeah. I got a lot of favorite movies. Comment what you think my favorite movies are below, comedy-wise. After a month of being in prison, the guards had found that Random Task had killed his cellmate. Oh my god. Random Task actually murdered somebody? Yeah. Did he use his shoe? No. What did he use? His MMA fighting. 